Good evening, good morning, everyone. Oh, very nice to see you all again. It's been a couple of weeks. Tonight, I would like to read you uh, Shokshu number 21, Setsudo. There is no selfish person who fulfills the way of the universe. If you awaken to the principles and way of the universe, you are given the responsibility from the universe to share them throughout the world. Do not say that you don't have the strength to help people. If you have this experience one day, you are already a teacher for that experience. The world is full of people who are lost and are suffering from an unhealthy mind. Let us share this awakening with others and with all our hearts. Thank you. So tonight, uh, we are exploring another of Kuchitoi Sensei's pithy phrases. <laughs> this one is your character shows in your technique. If your character is corrected, the technique is corrected. So uh, uh, let's see, uh, Sayaka, if you're here, would you please read that in Japanese for us? Um, sorry. Waza ni wa kokoro no kuse ga deru. Kokoro no kuse ga naoru to waza mo naoru. Thank you very much. So another way of saying this is basically just, you know, mind leads body, right? So that's Toy Sensei's primary principle of the universe. You know, I think I've said before, he says, when he says the principle singular, he means mind moves body, a mind leads body. When he uh, talks about the principles, it's probably the three principles of the universe. Universe is a, a, a infinite sphere with an infinite radius an infinite gathering of infinitely small particles. And it's always changing, but it could be any of the other principles. Five principles of Shinjin to its Aikido, for instance. And this mind moves body. Um, it's, it's, a, it's something easy to stumble on. It, it seems like easy to understand. You know, uh, but uh, as we mature, the process of going through our training year after year after year in Aikido is a process of ma maturing of our character, isn't it? So the character, uh, so let me just clarify. So there's a state of mind which is present, let's say when we're doing a technique or when we're in relationship with another person, our state of mind might be uh, nervousness or some kind of uh, anxiety, or it might be excitement or uh, wonder. Uh, those are not character traits, those are states of mind. But deep underneath that state of mind is a character trait. And it, it can be a positive one like loving kindness uh, or uh, generosity or uh, compassion, but it also might be a negative one like greed or envy or jealousy. And usually when we have some sort of disturbed state of mind, it's because we have a character trait that hasn't been resolved. So as we're going through maturity uh, in our Aikido practice, we are gradually refining and uh, yeah, our character. So my question is, Toy Sensei always talks about our conscious mind draws from our subconscious mind. 
and our subconscious mind is made out of all of our past experiences and knowledge. So does that mean then that uh, someone with good character, with a positive character, does that mean that the subconscious mind is full of something or empty of something? Okay, let's do some key breathing. All right, so is the subconscious mind full or empty when we have good character? Well, I would like to suggest that it's both. Or in other words, let me put it a different way. When we are, uh, someone betrays us or we are mistreated uh, as we all have been sometime in the past, if we carry that in our subconscious mind, then we it causes us to judge others. So when we judge another person to be a certain way, that's based on something that happened to us in the past. We become suspicious, judgmental. So that's when our mind is, our subconscious mind is filled with negative. But when it's filled with positive, there's no judgment. There's just openness and a willingness to explore and discover what it is that's happening, not a, 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 a knowing that, that you know what's happening. So how does this relate to Aikido? Well, when someone is attacking us, they have some judgment. They have some idea, something they're trying to do to us. Okay, so of course in the dojo, it's a student who has, is only just playing with us, playing a role, but the role is, and if it's played correctly, it's convincingly played. Uh, the role is someone who is judging the other person to be this way or this way or this way. So in Aikido, what we learn to do is to approach someone, to face someone, we call it osairu, without judgment. Or in other words, our character is free of judgment. It's open and it's accepting. And that means that that judgment that the attacker has is the opening, right? So the five principles are, let's see, key is extending, know your opponent's mind, Know what is their judgment. Know what it is that they're trying to do to you. Respect your opponent's key. Remember that you're not judging them. They're judging you to be one way or the other. You are open and, and, and to whatever condition they're showing. So we respect whatever might arise. We put ourselves in the place of our opponent and we can only do this effectively and by following our opponent. If we're thinking of leading, that means we're judging. We're trying to control the other person. We're trying to do something to the other person. So instead, we follow their intention. And physically, that manifests as us moving together. So then wherever you go from there on, gently, openly, convincingly, with great confidence. The last one is lead or perform with confidence. The other one follows you, you cannot help because the judgment, that intention is captured. So this is why Toy Sense says, you know, well, it's why he says, he talks about the importance of character 
uh, being corrected means uh, not that there's a certain way that we should be and we should be watching ourselves for that. No, 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 no. A character that's empty of judgment doesn't have to watch itself at all. It can be on the mat, it can be at a party, it can be with a partner, it can be anywhere. In any situation, and it's not watching itself because it doesn't have to. We, the character of the person that watches him or herself to try to act correctly or according to morality, according to uh, some rules is according to judgment, right? So a, 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 a character that is mature and free, it means free of judgment, free of negativity in the subconscious mind. So whatever happens, whoever attacks, whoever comes, though we can easily join with them. We can accept them and embrace them and join with them. So, of course, now, one other thing is, none of us is perfect. <laughs> no one has a subconscious mind that is perfectly pure, right? So we do react. We have reactivity. We still have judgment. It arises all the time in our lives. So that's why we practice meditation. So that as soon as it arises, or as soon as possible, we notice, and just like when we're meditating, we just return. We just return to the state of no judgment. I think that's enough for you to discuss. So Prakash is your uh, moderator tonight. So he will assign you to your rooms and I will see you in, uh, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Yes. All right. Excellent. Yeah. All right, let's begin. So I have a question that, that arose for me. Yeah. In, the, in the Western lexicon, the ego or the personality is often called the character structure. So we, we were, I was getting caught up in this thing about, in my training, I feel as though my character has been uh, dissolving and I've become more transparent and less associated with my character. Yes, and? And and as we discussed that, we saw that there was a, a process of maturation, that the more identified you were with your character, the, the more conflict and, you know, clashing there was, but the more you became uh, less identified, the more in harmony you were with the universe. Yeah, well, I think that's a good summary of it. But I, you know, we, the, 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 the tricky thing here is that we can't leave ourselves alone, basically. <laughs> and even when we're soaring, we somehow remain conscious of and very pleased with this soaring. <sighs> so to me, um, personality is not the same as character. Uh, state of mind is not the same as character. Ego is not the same as character. Mm -hmm. Characters are your fundamental core uh, recognition of what is. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, whatever the nature of that recognition is, that immediately and automatically without hesitation uh, dictates how we see other people and circumstances. So that's why I was mentioning about past 
life, uh, past uh, experiences and knowledge in our subconscious mind, those bring up reactivity, right? They bring up judgment. Um, but so if we really experience them fully, we really notice them completely and we allow themselves, allow those uh, negative feelings to have their day within us in meditation, not causing any harm to anyone else. <laughs> you know, then, then little by little, the subconscious mind is really transformed out of the state of needing to be controlling others all the time. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's so many ways that we label things in, at least in the English language. And we were so um, obsessed with all these labels and, 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 uh, mm. uh, and, and then try to put them all together to figure out the philosophy of the, the entire being, you know. And really what we're after here is freedom from right. all of that. Right. The, really the wonderful thing that I love about Aikido and Toy Sensei's teaching and Suzuki Sensei's teaching of us was that the bottom line was always move freely without hesitation. And, and, and I take that to, to, to mean not just physically, but in every way, respond freely without hesitation. Yeah, thank without self-judgment, without yeah. self, mm -hmm. without self. Yeah, that that clears it up for me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Group two. Hi, room two consisted of Christoph and Alaria. Um, we got down to the situation. Well, I brought up the thing is that I was taught that the subconscious a mind is our survival mechanism that the subconscious mind will actually react faster to a situation than the conscious mind and i was wondering if you know through aikido training you know and this of course like curtis sensei said it's an all-round aspect and not only the physical but the other thing do we when we unify our mind and body or the subconscious and conscious mind um is the conscious mind like our, our, our leash system, our training system, so that when we do an immediate, um, the reaction will occur in your subconscious mind, but it's tempered by your conscious mind to not do anything hurtful or, you know, uh, judgmental in the negative, or as Christoph would say that, you know, sometimes your mind can trick you because you have all these empty spots in your subconscious mind that um, which are a collection of all of your experiences up in your life and you don't want to end up filling those empty spots with, with negative things either you know just to make it up but um, you know it's like how most uh, living things are afraid of fire but you know we have our first responders who are trained you know, particularly firefighters to go in and, and um, you know, control it to help people out. And, you know, it's kind of like, is, is that their mind and body training too, that they are able to perform and function in a positive way. Um, and, you know, just be able to, to, to react without, you know, making anything hopefully negative that would um, worsen the situation and well, um, um, in Aikido that's our training also yes so of course we have that training in Aikido every discipline has that training where we have to learn to move forward in a dangerous situation and uh, control ourselves and the elements within this sphere and if we go outside that sphere, we may get burned or we may cause harm, right? So we learn this in Aikido and the techniques show us how to do that. But Linda, we, we want to not spend our life watching ourselves being a good boy or a good girl. 
we don't want to be constantly self-consciously watching. So now in every discipline, there's mastery. Of course, it's not easy. And that means there's very few maybe that reach whatever you might think of as that mastery. To me, the, the, the mastery means when you no longer need to watch yourself and control yourself in order to be free and open and uh, useful in every situation, positively useful. Um, as long as we are still having to watch ourselves and guide ourselves and be careful about this and be careful about that, saying this or doing that, grabbing this way, grabbing this way. As long as we're, that, we're in a state of training, that's fine. We're all practicing, nobody's perfect. But it, it, in everybody's life, there are moments of mastery when you see, oh wait, I, I, I have responded to that situation accurately and immediately without any reactivity. In other words, I trained myself so well that I was able to actually social, let go of the training, let go of the form and just be free. So that's, of course, that's kind of an ideal and that's what we're all working on and working for and looking to understand how, how does that come about? And I don't think anybody can tell you actually. Uh, sometimes we stay, say it happens in, as a state of grace. Uh, in Aikido, well, in spiritual training, they often say we, we sit and meditate so much to make ourselves more likely to be a uh, more accident prone, more likely to have <laughs> this thing happen where we suddenly realize we suddenly are free of this or this binding, grueling self consciousness that we carry around with us all day long. <laughs> you know, the picture when we start to sound like our mother or our father. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's a. Uh, a wonderful thing that we have this opportunity to practice like this. And we can never, you know, figure it out ahead of time. It evolves, it opens itself to us as we practice sincerely. Once we think we've got it and we know it and we stop like practicing in every moment, then Then we're done. Then we're done. So let's all keep practicing. <laughs> okay, next group. Thank you, Linda. Okay, Sensei, you, Sensei. I, I omitted to introduce my group. I was in a group with Lynn Curtis Sensei, Carlos Boyer Sensei, and Murta. So, oh. group three, would you unmute yourself? representative from group three. Oh, maybe there wasn't group four. Five. No, group four is here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, good evening, Sensei. Good evening. Uh, group four, we were, I was with, with Gloria and Roy. Yeah, we had also an interesting discussion and um, um, Gloria uh, told us about uh, Naloi Sensei always saying the way you do your Aikido is you do everything in your life. And I, I well remember you telling me while driving in the car that uh, people drive the same way they do their Aikido. And this is so true. <laughs> So uh, we were discussing along those lines, uh, different aspects and tried to come up with a question. And um, 
in Tori's sense, it says um, your technique, when you correct your character, you correct your technique. Um, and you already talked about mastery in, in some, some art. Uh, the question is, is our mastery in some technique like playing golf automatically making us uh, a person of a better character or being a mastery carpenter or whatever? But the same could be said for Ki Aikido. Is it automatically when our technique is flawless that our character is also flawless or is there a lot of fakery also possible and uh, or maybe there has to be a different mindset in behind the training that what we call key in daily life that our training actually is transferred to every aspect in our lives. Well, you know, uh, Olaf, we do know uh, about Tiger Woods. He has definitely had achieved mastery on the golf course. Certainly moments of mastery, let's say it that way, because I think for, for everyone, it's moments of mastery. He spoke about them. I saw him after a certain, uh, when he won Augusta National one time, many, many years ago, he said he went into a state uh, of mind that was like being in the zone, he said. And he said, I could do no wrong. I could not hit the ball poorly. <laughs> and, but he said, then it went away. So it doesn't say. And yes, maybe his, his golf character is perfected to the level that, of mastery. But it doesn't mean that, obviously, his, the character of the man with his family was perfected on that level. One doesn't cancel out the other. And uh, in either way, we don't judge him to be, therefore he's a bad golf player. No, he's still a master at golf or was. And you know, think of other sports personalities that you know, or other uh, business men that, uh, or women that are very highly skilled or developed in writing uh, novelists or, but in their daily life, they end up committing suicide. Um, you know, we, the, the, there's so many. I don't want to mention names, but but this is so so that yes, it's possible that you uh, achieve a level of mastery on the mat, and it doesn't necessarily translate into your daily life. So, Toy Sensei's teaching and my teaching is centered on why be a dojo expert? What's the good of that? Yes, have fun. Do the best you can, master it even if, if possible. That's very cool. But make sure that it is transforming your relationship with your wife or your husband, your children, your grandchildren, so that always your life is becoming less judgmental, less reactive not through self-control, <laughs> but through insight, through noticing. Self-control does not bring about true change. That's just another ego trick. Okay. Group five. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, Sensei and everyone. Hello, Venture. Group five, uh, Vitali and Jan and myself, and uh, we weren't sure whether Vitaly or I was going to take the lead here, but um, we uh, discussed real basic applications of this, of this uh, issue, and that would be just training on the mat, training with your partner. And uh, Vitaly brought up, uh, and we discussed um, in training, basically, you, you have a, a partner and you're told to do a technique and uh, you go through that technique. And it seems that 
this structure of training is, is really built from judgment, an issue of judgment. I have to do this art uh, and um, I want to do it well. So in training, how can you do, is it still possible if you're in a training mindset to do that without judgment? Of course, that's the whole point of training. Uh, it, for instance, it, it, when you're learning it, to drive, in the beginning you have very heavy self-judgment and very much judgment of other people on the road. But as you learn to master driving, you, you leave that judgment behind. Judgment is something that we use when we are imperfect, that we use when we are in doubt about our abilities. Uh, as we become more confident and more free of self-watching, let me just, then, then that, that tends to transform. Um, I want to make a point here that noticing is not self-watching. Um, it's not self-judgment. Noticing is just awareness. It's just open awareness. And to be able to do, for instance, Shomenuchi Kokunage with open awareness, without watching yourself perform it, and without watching the effect on the other person, but in true connection and unification, moving smoothly as if in a state of grace, gracefully and smoothly. This is, this is what all the practice is about. And as you know, as you become more and more mature in your practice, you have moments of this more and more often. It certainly isn't happening all the time, but you, you come upon moments of it. I've like Tiger Woods. I've been, I was teaching a seminar in Holland, in in Netherlands, uh, many years ago, and I went through a period of, I don't know how long it was, but it was quite some time, where no matter what I did, it it just worked out perfectly, and I was unaware of even directing myself to do anything or controlling anything. It was just automatic. And then we took a break and I reflected on it. And I started to laugh because as soon as I started reflecting on it, I started to judge it. <laughs> and then I knew, oh, okay, so that makes it go away. That's, that's like me. Well, we say the ego, but it's like myself getting in the way of myself. The self is perfectly capable. The mind body in, uni in unification is perfectly capable of operating without judgment. And we have moments of this. And as we get more mature, of course it happens more and more. You know, one of the things folks that I, that, I think this is something that we're all aware of, but I just want to, it's kind of the elephant in the room. So when we have a session like this, uh, where we all get together and, and we bring up a subject and everybody discusses it, and then we have a Q&A about it, we talk to each other about it. It is an invitation for speculation. It's an invitation for trying to figure out what's going on. Right? So even this has to be viewed like, uh, like a time, like a, like, like a period of training on the mat where we don't speculate, we don't try to control, we don't try to understand, we don't try to control our own understanding even. We just, like Suzuki Sensei used to say, 
we're just like one big ear. But that's not just when I'm talking. That's when you're talking. When you're speaking, listen to yourself as if you are one big ear. One big ear means there's no judgment organ in there. There's just an ear. <laughs> That's uh, what I took him to uh, mean when he said that to us so many times. When we listen to ourselves speak, when we listen to someone else speak, even when you're in your discussion group, if we're always in a state of open inquiry, do, do you know, that's why we don't want to, I don't want to come to a class like this knowing everything I'm going to say about some subject. Naturally, it comes up in my mind because I have it on my computer for the week. I go back and read it and look at it. And then in the morning when I'm sitting, it pops up. And, and then that gives me a chance to not try to figure out what it means, but just to let it sit there. So that means I'm just open to it. That's, I'm just resting in that idea, resting in toy senses pronouncement and maybe and then you know maybe things I say other people have trouble understanding or maybe you'll understand it right away I don't know I often never find out but the only way I can do this and I suggest that the only way you can do this is to always be in a state of inquiry, even when you're speaking. Does that make sense? How to do this, how to, it's, it's, I'm just putting in a word for emptiness, for openness, for leaving room for discovery, for all possibilities to take place. And that way, what happens when we're having this kind of a class is things come up that, well, I never would have thought of that, but I just said it kind of thing. You maybe never thought of this before, but you just said it to me, that kind of thing. So that's the feeling that you want to have when you do Munetsuki Kote Oroshi. That is for the first time and you discover something about it that you never knew before. And you can't really say what that is. Like when you wake up from a dream and you're so stunned and it's so moved you, but you can't remember what the heck it was about. It's like that. For me, it's like that. Okay. okay. Thank you. This is group number six. Is there a number six? Number seven. So I have oh. to un. There is a number six. I I was speaking up, but I unmuted my, myself. Not. So as Crystal speaking, we, I was in a group with Kayomi, Sally, and Joel, and we have four questions. The question of Kayomi is, um, how can I release a judgment? Shall I? Tell you all the questions, Sensei, yes. or yes, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. How can I release the judgment? And Joel, if I um, I feel that a situation uh, is uh, with a recurring pattern coming up, um, how can I not judge uh, myself uh, uh, when a pattern comes up, or or not judge even if a pattern come up? Then Sally has a, a, a statement that she has, in some negative situations, grace. Um, she 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 just help uh, like an accident prawn. She feels grace and the openness and the calmness. And this was uh, very good for everybody and for herself too. 
as a, uh, there was a positive response for everyone. And how can this happen more often or this is this a grace movement, movement? And my question was, if you are in, in a close relationship with a person who is a mental health disease, like a post-traumatic disorder, how can I, I practice that? But because in, in this situation, and even if the person is very close to you, um, the patterns are very uh, strong. These are where our questions. <laughs> Yeah, well, can I take the last one first? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so no one is perfect. That's the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we all have mental patterns. You know, we have, you know, the, the book the psychiatrists come up with every year. What's it called? Mm. And it gets yeah, bigger, and yeah. bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So it just... I'm told it just keeps getting bigger and bigger because we find more names uh, for 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 mental uh, patterns. I love it that you called it a mental pattern. It's just a pattern, and we all have these patterns, repetitive patterns. And this is sort of answering some of your other questions at the same time. When we're with other people. We have to be in a state of humility and forgiveness. Otherwise, we're just going to jump all over their mental patterns. We're not, not saying anything, but we're going to judge them to be defective or to be uh, less than uh, damaged goods in some way. Uh, needing to be fixed. You know, and when you see someone that needs to be fixed, that you judge they need to be fixed, you tend to want to fix them, don't you? Uh, of course, um, our practice encourages us to, uh, as we've been saying all evening, to move beyond judgment, to move beyond this kind of petty judgment. To, and, and when we are beyond this, uh, this, 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 what I'm calling petty judgment or uh, judgment of any kind, we are in a state of grace. We have mind-body unification. We are free. We are, we are, we are mastering the situation we're in. Uh, we are master of the situation we're in. Or let me put that differently. The situation we are in is being mastered. Maybe in spite of us, not necessarily because of us, but it is being mastered. And it is a result of the work that's been done, but it's not a cause and effect because you can never demand a result from yourself or from anyone else. So, you know, uh, we all live with people. And over a whole lifetime of living with another person, they have, they don't necessarily change. Some things change, but some things don't. They just stay that way. <laughs> and uh, so it's like if you're going to be bothered by that, if that's going to give you heartburn, if you're going to feel like you need to do something about that, you're gonna drive yourself crazy, right? So we, that's why I said we have to be in, in a state of uh, 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 no judgment and forgiveness, humility and forgiveness. Well, I know I'm also have things that drive people crazy. <laughs> so. That's the way that relationship is. There's no such thing as a perfect uh, pattern-free relationship. I don't think so. I mean, when we're in the, the, the dojo, I mean, Fincher was talking about the, the judgment really. What he was talking about there is the, 
the form we give the, ourselves that we need to fulfill. So uh, there's also a form in a relationship, a married, married relationship that we need to fulfill. And we practice and practice and practice. And while we're practicing, we're constantly forgiving and constantly reminding ourselves to be humble and to be quiet. My, my wife, Lynn, always says, particularly to, to, to younger students, newer, less mature students, but I take it personally too. <laughs> you know, be quiet, sit down, and listen to what's going on around you. That's how you learn in the dojo. When you come in and you're a student, watch. Be quiet. Don't speak. Watch what the guys with the black belts are doing, the women uh, with, with the, the, the high-ranking dons. Watch them. And I know that you all understand this. This is a principle that we all follow, but it's also a principle that we all ignore when we're like not in the dojo, when we're in a personal relationship or in some other situation. It's challenging when you're a caregiver, for instance, for someone that is really troubled or really difficult and in a difficult situation. But even more so, it doesn't mean that you don't recognize, you know, Crystal, it doesn't mean you don't recognize the pattern. Uh, but if you recognize the pattern, then that much more you can support mm -hmm. the other person. Is that okay? Now, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. How to get that more often? Practice more. <laughs> um, it, if you're receiving a pattern, seeing, noticing a pattern in myself, how to not judge myself for having that pattern, it's the same thing. You are just like the other person. How you treat yourself is how you're going to treat other people. So if you're judging yourself, that means you're judging other people too, in the same way just as harshly. So you don't judge, you just notice. Now, of course, that takes practice because we've been learning judgment all of our lives. We're still learning to judge. So unlearning that or learning to just allow someone to be who and what they are, including yourself and just Noticing that it's happening without judging. And an understanding will begin to form. Not a negative judgment about it. Not a positive support of, yay, I'm pretty good here. No. Just a noticing, an awareness about it will begin, begin to take place where there's a knowing. And that's after there's a whole lot of noticing, the knowing frees us from having to go there and be in that, that self-judgment. How to release the judgment, particularly self-judgment. We practice meditation. We practice keep breathing. We sit and sit and sit. You know, folks, I've been sitting for 50 years and I still have to sit every day. I still have to sit and I expect I will have to sit long after I've left this body because it's constantly arising. Life is constantly arising. Of course, this knowing I was just talking about frees us from uh, our reactivity. It frees us from judging others, but it doesn't mean that we're perfect or that we're completely free of it. It, it just means we're, we're, we harm people less than we used to. 
It just means we're kinder to others more than we used to be. And that, folks, is huge. One little moment of kindness. One little moment of not harming changes the world, changes the world. So let's keep practicing together, okay? Mm -hmm. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you.